What's up guys, AJ here from 3D Printing Systems. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about some more advanced print settings in the UpStudio software and how changing these settings can affect your prints. So let's get stuck in. Now to view these print settings, you first have to have a model loaded. So we're gonna add in a basic shape. We'll just put in a cube there. And then now we can go to our print panel on the left hand side and we get our basic print settings. Now to get a few more of the advanced print settings, we can click here to the double arrows and we can also click the print down, drop down box and click on advanced print. So let's just go back to the regular print settings and let's talk through them. Now we've covered most of these in our basic print settings video. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out. There's a link in the description below. But the ones we didn't cover are the ones that we're gonna go over. So over here on the right hand side, we've got top and bottom surface and top and bottom threshold angle. Top and bottom surface, you can see that we've got a mixture of layers between two layers and six layers. Now what this means is that with the top and the bottom surface of your model, you can change the thickness of the amount of layers that are printed to create that surface. Just like over here where you can have no top or bottom, we can make a really thick bottom and top, or we can make a really thin bottom or top. One, well, two layers is gonna be quite thin, and six layers is gonna be much thicker and much stronger. Now threshold angle. Threshold angle is simply the angle at which these bottom layer is printed, to, is printed uh, compared to the support layer. So you can imagine if you've got support printed completely horizontal and you print the, mod, uh, sorry, the model completely horizontal, you're gonna have two layers that line up and it's gonna be very hard to remove them. Now if you print that 45 degrees to that support layer or that raft on the bottom, then the actual object is gonna be much easier to peel off as the layers are not completely aligned. So the default is 45 degrees, and I recommend to keep it at 45 degrees because this is gonna give you the easiest um, removability of the raft between the model. Let's move on to support. We've got roof density. Now if you've ever printed an object that needed quite a lot of support, you'll notice that with the Cosentina pattern that builds up, there's a small shelf on the top that actually supports the model. Now you can change the thickness of that shelf with the roof density option. Now by default, it's three layers. You can reduce it down to two layers to make these a little bit easier to remove, a little bit more brittle. Or you can increase the roof density up to six layers, which means that your support shelves are going to be very, very strong. Next one we have here is the threshold angle. Now this is the amount of support that's going to be printed in most simple terms. 80 degrees means that any overhanging surface up to 80 degrees is going to have support printed for it. That means almost every overhanging surface will have support printed. Your material usage will go up, but also the quality of your print or the overhanging surfaces are all gonna be supported as well. Okay, and then the 10 degree option, which is the other extreme, means that only objects that have a 10 degree uh, overhang, which is quite, quite large, uh, are going to be um, supported. So very, very little support will be generated. Then we've got minimum surface area. Now minimum surface area uh, is measured in millimeters squared, which means that any hole uh, with a size of three millimeters squared or any gap within three millimeters squared or above will have support generated for it. If something smaller than three mil squared, it's not gonna have any support because the bridging capabilities uh, is gonna take over and do the rest. Now if you increase that to 20 mil squared, that means that you're gonna have no support generated for anything less than 20 millimeter squared gap. That means that you're gonna have a lot of um, bridging between, uh, between parts. So you could get a lot of sagging. Next one is spacing. The spacing is how spaced out the support uh, columns, the support vertical pieces are. So if you've got eight line spacing, that's gonna be sort of average space. If you've got four lines, you're gonna have a very, very tight support, and you're gonna have, at 15 lines, you're gonna have very, very spaced out support. Okay, so in layman's terms, 15 lines is gonna give you a lot less support, four lines is gonna give you a lot more support. It could be a lot more difficult to remove. Next, we have stable support. Stable support makes your support a lot stronger, uh, especially if you've got really, really small overhangs, it's good to have stable support on so that those overhangs get, uh, are made sure to be supported with no issues. And we've got other options down here. Thin wall means that the wall will be printed with only one layer. Preheat means that whenever time you start a print, 
the, the printer will preheat itself. You don't have to do a manual preheat, which can be quite handy for saving time or if you've got other things to do before your print starting. We've got sleep. Sleep means that if you have this ticked, after your print has finished, the printer will go to sleep and it will go into a sort of standby mode. Now this is great if you're doing a print over a weekend or overnight, it means that your printer isn't constantly running with the fan going uh, while you're not using it. And then the last one is easy to peel. And easy to peel is sort of a basic option. It means that your graft will peel away quite easily from your model. Now if you're printing with ABS and you find that the model continues to peel away uh, without, uh, with this clicked, then best that you unclick it and in that way you'll get better adherence of the raft to the model. Okay, but in all other applications you can try it, you click the easy to peel and it will be, should be much easier to remove your raft from your model. So there's all the settings there, we've got the default option to change everything back to default if we weren't happy with our settings and we just wanted to go back to how the printer came. Now if we close that we can go to the rest of the advanced print settings. Oops. Now if we close that we can go to the rest of the advanced print settings using the drop down arrow. And there's a couple of extra features here as well. We've got pause position. Now in advanced printing you can select layers to have your uh, model pause at. So we can type in the height number here. Let's say we wanted to pause our print at 5 millimeters, And we can see that our pause line or our pause graphic over here has moved up to about the 5 mil mark. And that means that we can change filaments. Maybe we want to change color. Um, and have a different colored layer. We can do that up to 10 times and have the printer pause 10 different times at 10 different heights. Now let's say we were doing another layer and we just wanted to view where we wanted to do it by using the model. We can actually slide this up using the mouse as well. We don't have to select exactly the height in millimeters. So that can be quite handy as well if you're doing it visually rather than doing it mathematically using um, millimeters instead of the, the model itself. We can choose which print slot that this model is saved to. Now by default, all of your prints will be slow, uh, saved to slot 10. Uh, if you quite commonly print um, the same object more, more than once, then you may want to save them to different slots so you can go in, select your print, and then just print it from the memory of the card rather than to having, having to load it and replace it every single time. What you do have to keep in mind is that with the saved prints, it saves the material settings and all of the other parameters. So if you want to change the resolution, you will have to re-slice and resend the model. And then next we've got the extrusion width. Now extrusion width means the, the width of the walls that are created. So if you have a high extrusion width, let's say you had 0.7, it means you're going to get very, very thick walls, thick vertical walls on your model. Right? And with a low extrusion width, let's say we go down to 0.35, it means the walls of your model are going to be quite thin. Now, the reason for this is you might want more strength in your model, however, it is gonna take a little bit more material and it will take a little bit more time if you change the extrusion width to something higher. So those are the advanced print settings here. We've got a couple more in, down here in maintenance as well. Now, we've got a couple of different types of print board. For most new users, we recommend using the regular perf board with the holes because it will give you the best adherence of prints. For more advanced users who want smooth underside surfaces or who don't want to print with support material, we've got the UpFlex board and then the new Up Glass board coming soon as well. Nozzle diameter, we also have a, a couple of different types of nozzle diameter. The standard original nozzle was a 0.4mm and that gave you a good balance between quality and print time. Now with a smaller nozzle diameter, you can achieve higher quality prints. With a larger nozzle diameter, you can print much faster but at the risk of lower quality. So we have the 0.2mm nozzle diameter. Uh, you have to set, if you attach this nozzle to your printer, you have to set the 0.2mm um, in the software as well. Otherwise the fee rate will be wrong and you could risk getting blockages and failed prints. 0.6mm is gonna give you a really fast print, but you're gonna have a little bit lower quality as well. Preheat option, standard. And then the last advanced option I wanna to talk to you about is customized filament. Now you can see the standard ones here are ABS PLA and ABS Plus. These are saved to the software and saved to your printer and they can't be deleted. But then you can also add your own um, customized material. And then you've got, we've added a few here. You can change the nozzle temperature and the platform temperature. Now there are maximum limits that you can adjust these to. I don't recommend trying to get trying to find them. Okay, uh, but then if you want to, you can add a new one over here. Only seven materials will be allowed, so you might have to delete one to fit the next one in. 
You can give it a name and you can change the nozzle temperature. Let's say this is a low temperature filament and you can change the platform temperature as well. Maybe we want that a little bit lower. Now, really, really handy if you're using different types of filament and like with all up printers, they're not locked down to proprietary cartridges, which is great if you want to experiment. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you haven't already, go and check out the other videos on our channel, more tutorials and projects to do. As always, don't forget to share, like up this video, and I'll catch you next time.